ಗಜಾನನಂ ಭೂತಗಣಾತಿಸೇವಿತ ಕಪಿತಜಂಬೂಫಲಸಾರಪಕ್ಷಿ ಉಮಾಸುತ ಶೋಕ ವಿನಾಶ ಕಾರಣ ನಮಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಪಾದ ಪಂಕಜ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಗೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮತ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾ ವಸುದೇವ ಸುತ ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ಧನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಳಮಾಂಗಲ್ಯೆ ಶಿವೆ ಸರ್ವಾಥಸಾಧಿ ಶರಣ್ಯ ತ್ರಯಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ವಸುಧಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಾತ್ರೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಅನ್ನಧಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ವಸುಧಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸ ಚಾಮರ ರಮಾಣಿ ಸವ್ಯದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಸೇವಿತಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಟಾಕ್ಷ ಕಿಂಕರೀಭೂತ ಕಮಲಾಕೋಟಿ ಸೇವಿತಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವಸತ್ಯ ಐಕ್ಯೂಪಿಣ್ಯೈ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಲಿತಾಂಬಿಕಾ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ 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 ಶಾಂತಾನಂತ ಅವಧೂತ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಪರಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಪರಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಪರಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಪರಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಓಂ ನವ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಪತಯೇ ಹರ ಹರ ಮಹಾದೇವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಟು ಆಲ್ Welcome to session number 2 in the Lalita Sahasranam series under the Vande Vidya Shankaram program of SPB of North. This month of Adi, as we call in Tamil and Ashada in North India, is particularly auspicious for Ambal. In many temples, particularly in Tamil Nadu, special pujas are done for Devi. This month, Devi is supposed to be observing a penance towards Lord Shiva. So, it's a very auspicious month and it's a privilege to speak on Radhita Sahasnamam at this time. And you are also blessed to listen to it during this month. So, in our first session last month, we had an uh, uh, introduction of Lalita Sahasranamam in which I gave an overview of the origin, the history, and some highlights of Lalita Sahasranamam, ending eventually with the Jnana Slogam. Today, we will begin of course, with Jnana Slokam, and then later on, move on to the Stotrams and its meanings in detail. Sri Bhaskar Raya, I mentioned in my last session, he had written a beautiful commentary on Lalitha Sahasranamam called Saubhagya Bhaskaram, which has added many dimensions to the meanings of Sanskrit words contained in Lalitha Sahasranamam. I will cover some of them in my talk. Also, I will include some comments by His Highness Kanchi Baha Periva, who has talked a lot about Ambal. And I propose to cover as many namas as possible with meanings in every session. So, at one session per month, it may take uh, uh, quite a number of sessions. At least a year to complete the Lalitha Sahasranamam series. 
uh, if you like, you can keep a notebook to jot down some notes while I speak. To begin with, I will chant the Jhana Slokam. When I do that, try and visualize Lalitamba in your mind. That's why I'm adding all these pictures for you to take a look at it, so that when you look at it, you can visualize a picture of Lalitamba in your mind when you chant the slogan. And you see how relevant it will be. I will uh, take this opportunity to explain some of the meanings uh, briefly. In fact, we covered it last time, but maybe due to one of time, we couldn't do it uh, complete justice to that. But in this session, I will give you some highlights of the Dhyana Slogam also, and then proceed to the Stotram part. So let's go to the first slide. You don't have to take notes on the Dhyana uh, Slogam because it is all there on the slide itself. And I'm going to enlarge it so that you can see it in full. Now we can see it in clear. Sindura Aruna Vigraham, Tri Nayanam, Manika Maulis Purate, Tara Naika Sekaram, Spita Mukim, Api Nabacho Ruham, Pani Bjam Adipura Ratna Sashakam Rakto Talam Bibradim, Saumyam Ratna Gadasta Rakta Charanam, Jayet Param Ambikam. Such a beautiful Jana slogan. Sindura Aruna Vigraham, Tri Nayanam. I mentioned last time, the color red does hundreds of shades. Here, Ambal's color is described as Sindura Aruna. It's vermilion color, an orange light. Aruna means like the rising sun. In the morning, you can see that. Three Nayanam, you know. Three Nayanam means three eyes. Who has three eyes? Lord Shiva. But Shiva and Kamaishwari are together always. Ardhanarishwara. So Ambal also has three eyes. Manikka Mauli is Purata. Manikka means rubies. And Mauli refers to the forehead or crown. As you know in Chandra Mauli, one who is holding the Chandra and his Mauli. In this case, Ambal wears a crown studded with rubies. And Tara refers to stars. Nayaka means the chief of stars, which means the moon. Shekharam. Shekhar means crown or crest like Chandra Shekhar. Ambal wears a crescent moon on her crown like Shiva too. Smita Mukhi. Some people keep the name of Smita, which is smiling face. Always keep a smiling face. You should all derive inspiration from Lalitha Amba, who always keeps a smiling face. What do you lose by smiling? Nothing. In fact, you have a lot to gain. I think smiling face is an inspiration we should get from Spitamukhi. Mahalavanya Sevati. You know, some people keep the name as Lavanya. It's an embodiment of beauty. Who can match, who can really match Ambar's beauty? Apina Bachorham, a splendid bust. Pani Byam, Alipura Ratna Sarsakam. Pani really means not water. <laughs> Like Hindi, it means hand, you know. Like you have Kodanda Pani, Chakra Pani. So it is hand. Ambal hands holds on one hand a jewel cup, which is brimming with nectar. It's a beverage of fermented honey and water. Raktot Palam Bibradim. In another hand, she holds a red colored flower. Saumyam. Ratna Gadastha Rakta Charanam Jayet Param Ambikam. Ratna, rubies. Gatam is part. You know, if you play the instrument also, it's called Gatam. So it's a part. So Ambal is keeping her foot on a precious part which contains rare gems. And what do you do? You are meditating on the Super Ambike. So the gist of this is the Divine Mother, you should meditate upon a shining in a vermilion red body with triple eyes, sporting a crown, which has rubies studded with the crescent moon, a 
beautiful smiling pleasant face a splendid vast one hand holding a jewel cup brimming with nectar and the other a red flower with a foot on a pot containing gems you see how beautiful it is it is a beautiful jana slogam you can visualize and you get a great inspiration by even just reading the jana slogam not to go for the real sotram to start so the next slide you can see the jana slogam continues yes arunam karuna tarangitaakshim दृशपाशाकुश पुष्पाण छापम अणिमातिरावृता मयूक विभावे भवानी वॉट डज दिस् मीन इट मीन ई मेडिटेट ऑन भवानी भवा रिफर्स टू शिवा एंड भवानी रिफर्स टू अंबा हु लाइक अरुणा ई मेन्शन इट बिफोर हू शाइन लाइक राइजिंग सन karuna tarangi takshim you know karuna means mercy tarangi means waves and akshi means ice karuna tarangi takshim means with ice that have waves of mercy not just one but waves coming in waves of mercy druta is holding what is he holding pasangusa pushpa bana chapa pasangusa means the dews and the gold and pushpa bana is arrows made of flowers we will talk about it later in the uh, sotram also bana chapam bana is bo anivati avrutam surrounded by eight siddhis which includes anima mahima lahima and various devatas mayukaihi means the streak or the ray or beam of light that shine the brightness aham means me ityeva accordingly or thereby vibhavaye which refers to the magnanimity of ambar bhavanim of devi bhavani so i meditate on the devi bhavani who shines like rising sun whose eyes emit eternal waves of mercy who holds a pasa and angusa in her hands to bind and control us who holds a bow of sugar cane and arrows of flowers and surrounded by ashta siddhis who shine like streak of ray i meditate myself upon such an exalted divinity of devi bhavani and going further to the next part of the dhyana slogam jaye शांतमूर्ति सकल सुरुणतांग i meditate on whom on that mother padmasana stam who is seated on padmasana it's a lotus pose it also means that she is seated on a lotus and lotus and lakshmi are very closely associated as you know because sita vada nam again she possesses a very charming face vada nam because sita vada nam vada nam means face it's also a cause for our inspiration for our upliftment for our growth again one more inspiration we get padma patraya dakshim padma patram means leaf she wears yellow color clothes pita vastram golden complexion and she is gold is glowing like a golden light you know hema hema means gold and va means light करकलित्रांगीफुलोटस्ट होल्डिंग 
by the appearance. This golden lotus will not will wither away. It is golden because it is not actually a flower. It's gold. Therefore, it continues to glow. Sarva alankara yuktam. You know it very simple. She is adorned herself with all types of alankara decorations. And abaranam is the makes a person a woman very beautiful. Satam abayatam. No, there is abaya mutram. Mudra is the sign. Abaya mudra is fear not, kind of protection towards all beings. Bhakta Namram Bhavanim. I am going down to the Divine Mother Bhavani in complete reverence. Sri Vidyam Shantamutim Sakala Suranutam Sarva Sampatradatrim. Sri Vidyam. She is the embodiment of entire knowledge of Sri Vidyam. Shantamutim. Very simple to understand. She is a very peaceful form. Sakala Suranutam. Sura means people. She bestows every form of prosperity. Sampat is prosperity, wealth. Here, prosperity means knowledge also. So, this particular Dhyana Sloka means that divine goddess, you should meditate upon her, seated on the lotus with petal eyes. She is golden colored, has lotus powers in hand. She dispels the fears of all devotees who bow before her. She is the embodiment of peace, knowledge, and is praised by gods and grants every kind of wish that we wish for. So, this again, one more slogan, which is a great inspiration for us to visualize Amba. The last one is this. Sa kunkupana, sa kunkuma vilepana balikuchumbi kasturi kam samantahasi de chanam sasara chapa pashankusam asesha jana mohinim arunamalya busham param japa kusuma basuram japa vidos mare dambikam. Sa kunkuma vilepanam. She is anointed with kunkum. In our dharma, kunkuma is very auspicious. That's why we keep kunkuma. Ambal is very pleased with kunkuma offered to her. They do the archane with kunkuma. Ali kusumbi kasturi kam. She wears kasturi, which is the deer musk, having a particular fragrance. And the pindi, potu, is enhancing her beauty. And the bees, they are drawn by the fragrance of Kasturi. They go around her. Samanta hasite chanam hasna. In, even in Hindi, you say to laugh, right? Her laugh, very gentle laugh, lovable, wholehearted, beautiful laugh. She looks upon her devotee with such a benevolent smile. Her laugh is visible in her very smiling eyes. Again, the smile is emphasized, you know, in all these slogans. So always keep smiling. You don't lose anything. Sasara chapa pasan kusam. She holds all her weapons, the bows and arrows, the gold and the news. And pasan kusatara hastadharim. You know, there is a slogan. Pasan kusatara hastadharim. Describing Amba. Asesha jana mohinim. Jana mohinim. She attracts people. She has the power of universal attraction. Irrespective of whether you believe in her or not, she will find it impossible to avoid her. And instead, you will be attracted towards her. Aruna Malya Bhushambaram. Again, the red Aruna Mala. Malya is garland. She wears it. And that jewelry is kind of exquisite. Japa Kusuma Basuram. Kusuma Kusuma is flower. Japa Kusuma is hibiscus flower. She is glowing like the red. Shambharati, they call it, high physical flower. Japa vidaus mare tambikam. I maintain, I meditate on that mother whose eyes are always smiling, who also holds a weapon like arrow, bow, nose, and the golden hand. And she is glittering with red garlands and ornaments. She has kunkuma on her forehead and is red and tender like the high viscous flower. So that is the gist of this particular dhyana slogan. Now we are going to start the stotras. 
the first three shlokams really deal with mata's avataram in my first session i explained the story of devi's avataram and uh, i will be using the words ambal or devi to refer to balitambika you see the picture you can visualize amba so beautiful eye catching with flowers all round and really seated so so majestically i will recite the stotrams and then give you the meanings of each of these om shri vatasi maharagi shri mat simhasaneshwari ஸ்ரீமத் i explained to you this stotram last time shushtrikatri brimvarupa gopri govindarupini samharani rutarupa tirodana karishwari sada shiva anugrahata panchakritya parayana actually ambala has five functions in this one we talk about three functions and the rest of the two will follow in the coming up stotrams you find the, the first line has got sri 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 mata sri maharagi sri mat the very first name in lalita sas nama refers to the holy mother and she is a source of all creation the names of all great people things and places have the uh, the honorific word sri prefix to them in our dharma like sri vidya sri chakra sri chaila sri nagar sri rangam and so on it is not only people but even places have got uh, one thing i'd like to say here about the beauty of sanskrit word there is an amazing wealth of words for a single object take for instance uh, water in english there is only one word water you cannot replace it with anything else but in sanskrit there are more than 70 words for water jalam vari salilam udakam toyam paniyam apaha neeram shilalam and so on so many words just for water but there's a different shades you know my wife and i we went to kumbh mela 3 years back and my wife wanted to pick up some ganga water so there was a an old vendor who was selling all these plastic containers and she asked him in hindi are bhai saab ये पानी ले जाने के लिए कुछ ये प्लास्टिक बोतल मिल जाएगा एंड यू लुक एट माय वाइफ से माता जी ये गंगा पानी मत कहिए ये गंगा जल कहिए देर इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन जल एंड पानी जल इज होली वाटर यू डोंट से गंगा पानी उसे गंगा जल सो द वर्ड श्री हैज गॉट सेवरल मीनिंग्स वन मीनिंग इज श्री रेफर्स टू लक्ष्मी you know sri kant my son's name is sri kant and sri kant means referring to vishnu because he is so dear to lakshmi but the same thing if you say sri kantan you know what does it mean it refers to shiva sri here means snake because he is holding a snake around his neck so sri has got double meaning it is got lakshmi it is also snake so in this particular case sri means auspicious it refers to wealth and prosperity and sri mata is auspicious universal mother of all now the historical background to worshiping devi as mother goddess starts from the time of adi shankara adi shankara an avatar of lord shiva himself he established six paths of worship many of you know that saivam vaishnavam sauram saktam ganapatyam kaumaram of this saktam is the only path which is related to the worship of feminine deity called shakti and that's why he got the name saktam interestingly of the six paths 
this is the only mode of worship reverentially referred to as Sri Vidya with the attribute prefix called Sri. So, Goddess Lalita Devi is extolled as the universal mother, the energizing principle of every creature in this universe. And Lalita Sasnami itself says, A Brahma Kita Janani. She created right from Brahma to even the tiniest worm. Kita means worm. It is also said she created the ten avatarams of Lord Vishnu. Sahasranam Sotra says, Karanguli Nakotpanna Nara Yanadasakati. So the action report here is creation. She is unique. What is the uniqueness of mother? Every creature is born from a mother, small or big. She is a personification of supreme self-sacrifice. A mother goes through a variety of sacrifices right from conception to delivery of the child. She nourishes the child with her own blood, bears it for a length of time, despite all kinds of inconveniences, endures a pain during delivery, and even after delivery, tends the child. Is it not sacrifice? The, you see, mother provides an overwhelming share of child care, both physically and emotionally. The Lalitamba is the supreme mother of all creations. She exists in a perpetual state of perfect harmony, ever benevolent, full of compassion for all beings. Such is the greatness and uniqueness of Lalitamba. You find the name for mother in different languages is almost similar. In Sanskrit, you say Mata, in English, Mother, German, Mutter, Latin, Mater, Russian, Mama, Spanish, Madre, Hindi, Ma, and so on. Bhaskaraya gives another dimension of Ma in Mata. He says it is signifying a measure. Like in Hindi, you say Maap. Maap means a measure, right? So she is considered as something beyond measure, limitless, meaning eventually salvation for devotees. So that is greatness of the first word, Sri Mata. Coming to the next word, Sri Maharagni. It is not Maharajani, but Maharagni. Maharagni, a special word. Supreme Empress. Ragni means queen. She is a great queen, one who controls the entire universe. She is called Parashakti, the supreme power. Para means supreme, superlative. The one who not only created, but also rules and maintains the universe. So the action here is Stiti or preservation. The third one, Srimad Simhasaneshwari, the one who is on a lion seat. You know, you have seen royal thrones. Uh, generally, there are uh, golden figures of lions placed on either end on the handle side. And uh, that's how it's a lion seat. It is reserved for royalty, queen or king. And here, there is actually Bhattatri Narayana. He mentioned this prefix, uh, three denotes. Devi Simhasana is surrounded by many Lakshmis. As you know, Devi's Vahanam is lion. And lion is the king of the forest. It's considered to be mighty, full of valor and destructive power. It is feared. Bhaskaraya says Simha also means pain. And many grammarians say the word Simha really came from the root hims or himsai or pain. Bhaskaraya actually adds that the two words himsa and Simha might have been formed by reversing the letters. Like the word Paschaka, which refers to a seer who sees, to Kashyapa. You see, the just the letters are interchanged. You know, in Tamil Nadu, Madurai is sometimes spoken as Marudai. And Kudurai, which is a horse, is talked about as Kurudai. So, Himsa is that into which creatures enter at their time of death. So, Simhasaneshwari can also be taken as Himsasaneshwari. 
the action here is samhara or destruction. So the three actions what I mentioned are in this first line itself. So Devi, by the three names, is seen in the three aspects of creator, preserver, and destroyer. From the name four to say up to 999, you can say the Lalita Sasanamam covers the other two aspects, namely Thirodana Karishwari, Sadashiva, Anukrakata, Panchakritya Parayana. Thirodana means Maya, illusion. And lastly, Anugraham, conferring the benefits. Thirodana gives bondage, Anugraha removes the bondage, ultimate mukti. So, going to the second line of this, Chidak Nikunta Samputa Devaka Arya Samudhyata. I mentioned this in detail last time, the one who was born from the altar of the fire of consciousness. Chit is pure Brahman, which is the altar of fire, and it dispels the darkness of ignorance. So Devi came out of the fire of pure knowledge and consciousness to promote what? The cause of the Devas, the divine forces. So you also hear the word Satchidanagam, Satchit Anandam, the bliss that comes out of the combination of Satyam and Chit, which is consciousness. So Deva Karya Samudhyata, this is Markandeya Purana, says the Devi is eternal, but she manifested herself for fulfilling the objects of Devas. On seeing the Devi coming from fire, Indra and the Devas were filled with ecstasy. As she came for their job to slay the Asuras, Bandasura and Mahishasura, who were enemies of the Devas, the key intent of Devi's appearance was to enhance the welfare of the whole universe, not merely help the Devas, also but to enhance the welfare. We talked in detail about these two words in the last session one, so we won't talk more about it. We'll go to the next number two verse, which says, Udyadvanu sagasraba chatur bahu samanvita ragas farupa pashadya kroda karangu sojvala Udyadvanu sagasraba Udyadvanu, Banu is referring to sun. So even with one sunrise, you can see the splendor of red color in different shades. You must really enjoy the sun rising, you know. So, so beautiful. Every minute the shade will change. But just imagine what magnificent splendor it will be to visualize Sagasraba, thousand rising suns. Such a magnificent radiance of the Divine Mother is compared to the splendor of thousand rising suns. So, Ambal emerges from this bright color. It is a kind of a orange red going to pomegranate red and saffron color. So it shades of color. And it adduces the fact that during Ujjad, which means creating the rising sun, it's also shown that the energy equivalence at the time of sunrise is extremely high. So the the Devi has three different forms. One is a physical form, the Stula Sariram, as they call it. The subtle, which is the Sukshma Sariram. And the Supreme, which is Para. The physical form, as you know, has hands, feet, face, etc. The subtle one, which is consisting of mantras. And the Supreme one, means the Vasana, is ideal. It's something to do with the mind. And that is difficult to visualize. Well, physical form is probably easy to. So the physical form is what is described in the next mantra, Chadur Bahu Samanvita. She is endowed with Chadur means four. Four arms. Bahu is pawns. And each arm has a tool or a weapon. These are not weapons like you have guns in America or AK-47. No. They don't kill people really. These are men to do good for devotees, as you're going to learn later. Four is again a very key number in our dharma. There are four yugas, krita, treta, dvapara, kali. There are four stages in human activities, as you know, 
தர்மார்த்த காம மோக்ஷம் பரம் பொருள் இன்பம் வீடு அஸ் ஏ கால் இட் இன் தமிழ் தேவிஸ் ஃபோர் ஆம்ஸ் பிளஸ் அஸ் இன் மெனி வேஸ் விச் யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு சீ நவ் ஆஃப்டர் மென்ஷனிங் தேவிஸ் ஃபோர் ஆம்ஸ் த நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் டிஸ்கிரைப்ஸ் தி வெப்பன்ஸ் ஷீ ஹஸ் காட் ராகஸ்வரூப்பாஷாட்யாக்ரோதாக்காரங்குசோஜலாம்ஸ்லோகமாட்ஸ்லோகமாட்ஸ்லோகமாட்ஸ்லோகமாட்ஸ்லோகம
they are made of hard iron met metals, you know, very strong, like Rama's bow. It should not break, like just a vegetable. On the contrary, Abba has got a bow made of the sweet sugar cane in her hand. How should the arrow be? Arrow is also made of metal and sharp. It has to pierce, right? But instead, she is holding floral arrows made of flowers. How is it that it is very contradictory to a normal definition of a bow and arrow? So, sugar cane bow represents her heart. Mano rupe chukodanda. Mano. It is her mano rupe ichukodanda. Ichu means sugar cane. The kodanda is what she is using in hand. The bow is sweet. Sugar cane, like her sweetheart. With that sweetheart, Ambal influences our mind by this bow and controls our senses beautifully with five flower arrows. In more on these five flowers, you will find in the next line. Panchatan Matra Sayaka, it says, Panchatan Matra Sayaka, holding the arrows of the five subtle elements. Sayaka means in this case arrow, in this case flower arrows. The five subtle elements are the five senses sound, touch, smell, taste, and sight. These are called jnanendriyams, the intellectual ones. Five sense organs, commonly referred to as ears, eyes, the nose, the tongue, and the skin. So you'll find successful people use these five senses in the most intelligent way that leads to success in life. If you are able to use these senses with control, then you should, can be sure of success. See, just one word, one mantra is so much of meaning. I don't think we have time to really explain this more, but we'll try to at least cover the highlights of it. By a gift of God, these Jnanendriyam perceive senses naturally and they provide inputs for us to act through five other organs which are called Karmendriyams. Karma is doing work, you know. So the ones that really work like hands and leg and tongue for speech, the excretory and reproductive organs. So these Karmendriyams are acted upon by the inputs given by the Jnanendriyams. So in all they have ten, but, but this Panchatan Matra Sayaka, these five floral arrows will grab our senses and control them or inactivate them. You know, that reminds me, I, I have to mention here, I have published a book called Kamakshi. It is a compilation of Kanchi Mahabharya's lectures on Ambar. It has both English and Tamil versions. It can be accessed from my website. EasyHinduism.com, EasyHinduism.com, one word. And they provide detailed descriptions to Devi. I cannot cover all of them here, but then I thought I'll give you the reference so that you can refer to it anytime. Next line. Nijaruna Prabhapura Majjad Brahmanda Mandala. You know, Devi is already described as Udyad Banu Sakasrava, like thousand rising suns, but she spreads the red effulgence or Nija Aruna throughout the whole universe. Majjad Brahmanda Mandala. You see the word Brahmandam, referring to the universe. Long before the modern scientists discovered about the elliptical galaxies, the universe, our ancient scriptures, including the Vedas, talk about Brahmandam. The big egg, Anta means egg, big egg. Sri Rudram, the Jnana Slogam says, Apatala Rabasthala the Bhavana Brahmandam Abhispurate. Brahmandam. There is something really great. Brahmandam. Now this is word described here too. So it is the effulgence is spreading all over the universe. Let's go to the next verse which says, Champakashoka Punnaga Saugandhiya Lasatkacha 
Kuruvinda Badi Sreni Kanat Koti Ramandita. Now, from this verse starts the physical description of Devi. You will find it extremely exquisite. Many exotic comparisons are made. Usually, poets do that, you know, to emphasize a particular word, they will compare it something exquisite so that you have an idea how it is like. And as I said, Kesadi Padam, it starts from the head first. In this Sostram, Ambal's beautiful locks of hair and the crown she wears on her head are praised. Lasat. Lasat means the word play or to appear. Kacha means hair. Lasat kacha. Devi's hair is adorned with what? Champaka soga punnaga saugandika lasat kacha. Champaka flower, asoka flower, punnaga flower. These are all normally flowers which give a lot of fragrance to outside, particularly worn in the hair, it gives a fragrance to the hair. But in this case of Ambar, her shining locks really give fragrance to the flowers in return. So the Lasat Kacha it plays on the hair and gives a fragrance. The hair gives fragrance to all these flowers. Next line it says, Kuruvinda Manisreni Kanat Koti Ramandita. You know, normally for a crown, we use the word Kritam, right? Very commonly known, generally worn by men. But Devi's crown is called Kotiram. The speciality of this, it is not hiding the beauty of the, her hair tresses which fall down. And what kind of a crown it is? It is filled with rows of Kuru in the money, which is, which is gems. Kuru in the money, also called Padmaraga, rubies. Mandita, Mandikadakratan Sulva Tamula, Mandikadakratanaka, it is decorated so much so, so highly decorated. The crown is decorated with rare gems, which are obtained from mines and riverbeds. And, you know, people wear lots of gems and uh, rubies and uh, emeralds and so on because they believe it confers some benefits like it confers love, prosperity, devotion. And Bhaskaraya says, if one meditates on Devi wearing these gems, his devotion will increase. So let's go to the next slogan, next slide, which is Totram 5. Ashtami Chandra Vibraja Daligastala Sobita Mukha Chandra Kalangaba Mriganabi Viseshaka. After hair comes the description of the forehead. In this case, the beautiful forehead of Devi is described. How is it? Devi's forehead is so bright as the Ashtami Chandra. So the moon on the Ashtami, eighth lunar day. It's exactly halfway to full moon. Alikas Talasovita means a place where the hair just adds beauty to the forehead. Alikas Talasovita, it beautifies the forehead. Mukha Chandra Kalangaba Mirganabi Viseshaka. Kasuri is a musk. Many of you know that it's a fragrant material which is obtained from a deer, which is Mirga, Mirga Nabi. Mirga is refers to here, deer. And this is obtained from Mirga Nabi, therefore it's called Mirga Nabi Viseshaka. And you have a description of Kasturi in, uh, for Vishnu, Allah. Kasturi Tilakam Lalata Palake Vachasthale Kaustubam. Don't you describe Vishnu? Same thing here, the Kasturi Tilaka adorns the moonlight face of Amba. Like, you know, it is so, so beautiful with uh, the fragrance uh, coming. And it's uh, particularly on the moonlight face. Kalangaba, it's actually a spot on the uh, moon. 
you if you see the full moon it has a dark spot you know that looks almost like a rabbit that's why you call shashank you know sashi is a rabbit so it's a kind of a dark spot and the devi's uh, tilaka looks like that spot in the moon that's the meaning of this particular verse going further vadanas para mangalya griha torana chillika vakra lakshmi parivaha chalan meena balochana you know it goes down to the face vadana vadana the very very first word is vadana vadana is the face the beauty of devi's eyes and eyebrows are described here you know you find uh, women all over the world they love to beautify their eyebrows so they have threading and waxing and coloring and so on there are so many beauty parlors where they focus on your eyebrows and that make them so beautiful by different processes uh, beauty parlors do that but amba she doesn't need a beauty parlor she herself is so beautiful she doesn't need any parlor smarana smaran she uh, He is really referring to Manmatan. So he is a lot of love, Cupid. Since he came from the mind, he is called Manmatan. The house of Manmatan is called Mangalya Griha. It's the most beautiful house, which is adorned with called Thorana Chillika. Griha Thorana Chillika. Thorana means you know those who are in Tamil Nadu they know the meaning of Thorana. You know they have. Uh, the floral decoration typical in any festivity they hang it round so beautifully and devi's face has eyebrows that resemble the archways which lead to the abode of the auspicious home of cupid griha thorana chillika manmata's home devi is also called meenakshi you know meenalochini वक्तलक्ष्मी परिवाह चलन मीना बलोचना मीना लोचनी यू नो इट्स बिलीव्ड दैट द फिश व्हिच मूव इन द वाटर दे ऑलवेज हैव द आईज ऑन द एग्स एंड द बेबी फिश द वेरी साइट ऑफ मदर फिश मेक्स द हेड एग्स हैच एंड देन द लेटर नर्चर्स द बेबीज इट्स कॉल्ड मत्स्य दीक्षा देयर आर डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन ऑफर्ड बाय मदर्स i mentioned about markada dikshay and markada mayaman marjar mayam last time but here it's called matsya dikshay and parivaha parivaha is a flood of water the the fish love to play in the flowing water like the fish playing in the flowing water they keep the eyes on the baby devi has her eyes play in the streams of beauty flowing from her face so beautifully expressed in this particular verse okay let's go to the the next one nava champaka pushpa va nasa danda virajita tara kanti tiraskari nasa varna basura another beautiful verse now we come to the the nose and the ornament worn by devi's on her nose that is described in the stotram in india the traditional hindu family especially in south india attach a lot of importance to the nose piercing and wearing of diamond nose rings some people have on both sides some people have on one side it is believed to enhance the beauty of woman and also improve her health devi's shapely nose as you see in this picture He is like a Nava Champaka Pushpa, you know, the freshly bloomed Champaka flower. You know, when it is bud, how it looks like small one, very sharp, like you know, then it blooms, and it looks like that. The comparison is made with the Nava Champaka Pushpa, but Nasa Danda, Nasa Danda is uh, the nasal ornament. Virajita means beautiful. This ornament. makes devi's nose look more beautiful how does this ornament look like tara kanti tiraskari nasa varna basura tiraskari means to disappear 
you can also say tiraskara means to ignore it we hear his causes disappear what does it disappear basura means light or splendor you know like a baskar you say for sun comes from the word bas which is light or splendor the ornament is so beautiful that it completely offsets the luster of a bright star of tara kanti it completely makes it disappear going to the next one kadamba manjari klipta karna pura manohara tatangayu kali bhuta tapanoduba mandala again another beautiful description of devi's years you know devi is uh, radiant and charming with a bunch of kadamba flowers kadamba manjari krutta karnapura manohara which is filling karnapura is filling the, the over the years the bunch of kadamba flowers tatanga tatanga is in tamil we call todu ear pendants you know which you wear here in the lobe you can see in this picture the one below ambal wearing tatangam two tatangams yugali means pair the beauty of tatanga is coupled with great power in them you know they believe it protects the husband in fact i want to quote a, a, a verse from saundra lagri karalanyat shvelam kabalitavatah kalakalana na sambhos tanmoolam tava janani tatanga mahima kanchi mahapuri got talks a lot about this so karalam means most dangerous you know chwelam is poison kabalitavatah is one who swallowed who sambho shiva kalakalana he has no end or death tanmoolam is the cause for it is tava your tatanga mahima the glory of your ear pendants is what really helped shot shiva to survive even after he drank the poison that is the power of ambal tatangam such is the power of the tatangam they were once upon a time very simple they are made from the leaves of palm tree you know what you call panai ole in tamil even today during varlakshmi puja many homes decorate the face of lakshmi with the maroon color panai ole and as your pendants tapa nodu bamandala tapa means hot or refers to sun udupa is moon mandala is circle devi is wearing the sun and the moon as her ear ornaments just imagine wearing the sun and moon as her ear ornaments so that is this verse and going further to stotra 9 now பத்மராக <laughs> and the very next line describes the beauty of devi's lips and teeth there is a beautiful comparison made here related to the color of devi's lips it's so nice nava vidruma means a fresh coral coral is a marine gem you know it comes out of uh, uh, sea it is found uh, in intense red color what you call red coral Uh, prabal in hindi or pavanam in, in tamil it imparts courage and uh, uh, helps people in uh, overcoming fear and nervousness so that uh, it is compared devi's color of lips is compared to this gemstone it is also compared to bimbasri what is bimbasri bimbasri bimba sri is a fruit that is bright red in color you know in hindi they call tindora or uh, tondli is also another name in marathi uh, it's called kovai palam in tamil you know people cook the raw green fruit 
and eat it, but you allow it to become uh, fruit completely ripe and cut it, it will be red, dark red color. The dark red color of the bimba tree is compared to the Davy's lips, which is natural. And it puts the color of coral and bimba tree to shame. Yeah, nowadays, you find women using different shades of lipstick to enhance their beauty. There are all kinds of colors. It is an adoption from the Western world that we do that, but Davy's lips are so beautiful, they are natural color, which is compared to bimba tree fruit and also red coral. Shuddha vidyanku rakara dhuja bhanti dhyojvala karpura viti kapodha samagashtati gandara We are coming to the 10th verse now. Shuddha, you all know, is pure. Pure Shuddha vidya means pure vidya, pure knowledge. Ankurakara, which is the fresh buds. Dvija refers to twice born. You know, when uh, the boys are born and the, uh, they're called first born, and then when they have open them, they're called twice born. They're supposed to be having another birth. So Dvija is referred to the Brahmachari after he adopts open them. Likewise, even birds are first born as eggs and then they hatch into birdlings. Hence, they are also called Vija. Here, you know, is refers to the teeth. The first set of teeth that we cut when young, they fall off. You know, kids, they have the first set falling off and then we get a second set of fresh, bright teeth. And those teeth are also called Vija. Because it is uh, coming again. So, Dvija also has another meaning which is explained by Bhaskar Raya. Now, Vidya begins with Vedas with the Brahmins. In turn, Vidya gets spread by Brahmins who are the buds of Vidya. Devi shines with the two rows of teeth in the form of bud of pure knowledge. The teeth itself is called Dvija. Bhaskara adds that there are 32 dikshas or the initiations which are laid down in the tantras. These are called the two rows of Brahmins, like two rows of teeth. Suddha Vidyankura, beginning is a certain initiation to be begun before we go into the 32 dikshas. Devi can be attained only by those great men who go through all these 32 dikshas. So here, the the Dvichapangti Dvyojvala is uh, uh, referring to the two rows of uh, teeth that uh, Ambal has. And the next line is Karpura Vitika Moda. What is Karpura Vitika? It refers to, you know, the fragrance of Karpuram camper, which is embedded in tambulam, which is uh, the vetalai or betel nymphs or pan, you call it. Look at the fragrance. Uh, Devi is described as tambula purita mugi. Generally, we find in India, people consume betel leaf, uh, pan after a uh, uh, meal, and it has various ingredients. And uh, it's not only a digestive, but it is also a kind of deodorant. So here, karpura vitika moda, he is, he is having the fragrance of chewing the camper embedded tambulam. Samagarshti Dikantara, the next uh, mantra, it says the fragrance, Akarshti Dikantara, it is, it is pulling or spreading all the dishas. Dik is direction, right? Dikantara means it is spreading in all directions, like east, west, etc. So much is the fragrance of a tambula puritamuki. That is the next verse is number 11. Nija sallaba madurya venid bhatsita kachapi vandas pita prabhapura majjat kamesha manasa. This verse is describing the uh, words coming from Devi's mouth. Nija sallaba. Sallaba means conversation. 
how is it maduryam this maduram is itself a sweetness so maduryam is sweet and kachapi is the name of saraswati's veena you know saraswati holds a veena and that is called kachapi and it is producing melodious music it's a musical instrument having strings that produce a beautiful melody so devi's speech is a sweet melody of devi's speech it puts to shame even the veena of saraswati in short devi's speech is so melodious it is super than saraswati's kachapi mandasmita i mentioned before again gentle smile mandasmita prabhapura she is full of glory majjat means drowned who who gets drowned the mind of kamesha majjat kamesha manasa who is kamesha is a contact is one with devi the mind of kamesha gets drowned in what in the fullness of the glory of devi sweet smile when it said the mind is drowned it means devi's glory is unlimited this verse actually exemplifies the unity of kamesha kameshwari or shiva shakti aikyam as we call it which is eventually culminating in this lalita sahasana shiva shakti aikya rupena samsita next verse 12 anakalita sadrasya subhagasri virajita ಕಾಮೇಶಿ is beyond any comparison because of, of its unparalleled beauty kamesha badda it means tied by kamesha mangal sutra mangal sutra the holy marriage thread thali as you call it in tamil so be the kantara beautifully adorned with the thali mangal sutra which is tied by kamesha around her neck next verse we'll go to the next slide which is 13 kanakangada kejura kamaniya bujanvita ratnagraive va chintaka nola mukta phalanvita see here this verse actually describes devi's arms kanaka means gold no you know the famous kanakadara stotram composed by adi shankara as a brahmachari to help a poor woman and is showered with gold kayura you know it's a armlet which is worn here in this it is a decorative band you might have uh, seen it in some pictures you know uh, the royalty wearing this as an ornament around the upper arm they been worn since ancient times you may see the pictures of kings wearing it kamaniya is pretty or beautiful and puja refers to the arm devi's arms are beautifully adorned with this kayura or golden armlets the very next line says atna grave eva grave means referring to you know high griever is just the grave is neck of the neck so it says devi's neck is adorned with gem studded necklace and a locket of pearl hanging from it lola chintaka is referring to meditation now baskara interprets it like ratnagrave chintaka those who meditate on the gem studded neck they worship her externally but not really in their heart they are kind of middle class worshipers the pearl hanging lola refers to those who are bound by earthly desires in agni purana says lola means change or desire there are certain kind of worshipers uh, who belong to this kind and they are kind of lowest class of worshipers the muktas are the highest class of worshipers so going further to the, the uh, next slogan which is number 14 
कामेश्वर प्रेम रत्न मणि प्रतिपणस्तनी नाभ्यालवाल रोमाली लता फल कुचत्वी देवीज बॉसम डिस्क्राइब हियर आर टू ड्रेस और द प्राइस व्हिच आर ऑफर्ड इन रिटर्न फॉर द प्राइसलेस जम व्हिच इज द लव ऑफ कामेश्वर एंड द टू ब्रेस seem like the two fruits grown on the creeper that had the springs from our navel so the next verse is number 15 lakshromalatadharas <clears throat> lakshromalatadhara tasamunneya madhyama sanabharadalan madhya patta bandavalitraya so here devi's waist is uh, so thin that we have to infer it that only from the creeper like hair which is from her navel and she wears a golden belt a belt which is called in tamil odiyanam patta banda which is supporting her waist it actually bends under the weight of her sthanams or breast and make visible the three folds of the skin which is below the bosom bali traya which is three folds of the uh, it's a samudriya lakshman aruna aruna kausumba vastra baspat kati tati ratra kinkini karamya rasana dama bhushita now her waist is bright with an intense red color aruna 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 i explained before which a garment which is intense red it is decked with a belt odiyanam i said which is beautified ratna kinkini which means small jewel you know kinkini kinkini means it's making the sound kinkini therefore it's a small bell they are around now the odiyanam is a, a, an ornament which is being worn by traditional women in india mostly i think uh, they wear it on occasions like weddings or f- festivals not on a daily basis i still have one that was worn by my mother uh, it has uh, tiny bells too it was uh, worn during our wedding and some vacations she would use it so this is ratana kinkini karna rasana dhama bhushita so that is describing her uh, golden belt which is uh, the waist is uh, the bright red and beautified by the odiyanam next line we are going to be the next slide which is 17 kame sagnata saubhagya matra vuru dvayan vita manikya mukuta akara janu dvaya virajita this uh, verse you know goes on to describing ambal's legs uru means uh, referring to the thighs the symmetry and the smoothness of her thighs are only known to kamesha kamesha gnata means only kamesha knows it her knees janu dvaya you know janu is knees janu dvaya means two they shine like jeweled crowns manikya mukuta i think it refers to the knee caps which looks like jeweled crowns on her knees in uh, in latin also knee is termed as genu some uh, similarity there uh, you know there is a word called ajanu bahu which means a huge figure ajanu bahu means one who has uh, hands extending right up to the knees ajanu bahu they call it right some people use it in tamil next verse indra gopa parishtipta smara duna pajangika ஜங்கிக்கிங் you can see it in the pictures of rama and lakshmana carrying the quiver on their backs they put the arrows in that parichipta means surrounded or overlaid 
Davy's scarves are like the sapphire studded quiver of Manmatha, who is the god of love. The arrows actually point downwards in the quiver. In this case, we can interpret that uh, the arrow's sharpness would be compared to Davy's uh, toenails, you know, which can be considered as arrow ends, sort of. Gulfa is the ankle bone. Guda Gulfa means, Guda means hidden. Hidden ankle bone. Kurma Prishta. Kurma is tartoise and Prishta is the backside. How is the backside of tartoise, you know? They are kind of arched, you know, like the... So here, the ankle bone is compared to the hidden ankles are in step, which are arched like the back of a tortoise. That is a comparison made here. So we are going to the next slokam, which is Totra 19. Nagadititi Sanchana Namajana Tamoguna Adatvaya Prabhajala Parakrita Saroruha. We are now coming to the description of Devi's feet. You can see the picture of Devi's feet there. Naka. Naka is referring to the nails, you know, Nakam. The bright rays from her nails, they dispel the darkness. What is called Tamoguna of her worship. Namajana. Those who worship with uh, the darkness or ignorance, what is Tamoguna, the Nagaditi Sanchana, the brightness or rays from her nails, they dispel, they destroy the Tamoguna of worshippers. Who are these worshippers? They are including Brahma and Vishnu and others also. In the meditation on her feet, you can see the feet is given a lot of importance in Sanatana Dharma. You know, we worship Padukas, Bharatan took Rama's Padukas and kept them on the Simhasana. But Western culture is different. In fact, the feet is looked down upon when people will say they want to swear at somebody, they say, my foot, they call it. <laughs> Which means it is such a lowly organ. But it is totally different in Sanatana Dharma where we worship Padukas in the feet. We fall at the feet of people. And the glory of a lotus feet is described in, in, in kind of many, many scriptures. One example is uh, uh, Sri Pada Saptati. You know, there are 70 exquisite verses in Sanskrit in praise of Devi's holy feet. It's actually composed by Sri Narayana Patatri, of the famous Narayanam composer. You know, even after he composed Narayaniam, he was not content, he was not happy. Then Ambal appeared in his dream and said, go to a place called Mukti Sala and look at the Ambal there, Vishnu, uh, Durga. It is a place, Mukti Sala, very near Guruvayu. In fact, I gave a talk on this Saptati in uh, Chicago, the Kalibari Temple. Uh, you can see it in the YouTube. It's a one hour uh, lecture on just Sri Pada Saptati. On these feet, he has composed 70 beautiful verses. And Ambal Street, very interesting dialogue between two great scholars, you know, Appaya Dikshidhar and Nilakanta Dikshidhar. Appaya once asked Nilakanta Dikshidhar, Apati Kim Karaniyam, during calamity, what should one do? Nilakanta answered, Smaraniyam Charana Yugala Ambayaha. Remember the lotus feet of Devi. Then Appaya continued, Tat Smaranam Kim Gurute, what will that memory do for me? And Nilakanta answered, Brahma de Nabi Kinkari Kurute. It makes even gods like Brahma to be your servant and help you. That is the greatness of Ambal's feet. Smaraniyam Charana Yugala Ambayaha. Uh, so this is a very interesting thing. And uh, uh, this kind of thing, the feet, remembering the holy feet itself will give you a great inspiration. You know, it gives you above all humility, vinayam as they call it. And the moment you look at the feet here, displayed here in this picture, you will get that humility in yourself. 
and you'll be inspired by the sparkling rays coming out of the feet of the Holy Mother. So even Devas and uh, Brahma Dhanabi, they will help you and they will help you with all this. So the next line reads, Padatvaya Prabhajala Parakrita Sarurga the two padams, padadvaya, dvaya, feet prabhajala, you know, which is a beauty, parakrita saroruha. They actually shame the lotus, the soles of her feet, by their beauty, just shame the lotus. So beautiful it is. We will go to the, the uh, verse 20 now. Sinjana mani manjira mandita sri padambuja. Marali Manda Gamana Mahalavanya Sevati. You can follow the slogan in the slide. Her lotus feet is how it is. You can see the picture. It is adorned with jeweled anklets, what we call Golusu in Tamil. It is anklets. That is so beautiful and it has got small, small bells in it. It's it's, it's a tinkle, you know. Sinjana, mani manjira. Mani means small bells. They kind of tinkle. There's a big story, but I don't have time to tell about this. But uh, these well anklets are supposed to add a lot of beauty. When Ambal walks, you know, this makes little, little sound uh, sound of tiny bells. Marali mandagamana. Marali is referring to Hamsapakshi or a female swan. You have seen how the swan uh, swims in the water so gently, you know, so gently, nicely. It's was elegant and gentle manner. So Devi's gait is very slow and gentle like a swan. Marali mandagamana, mandagamana. And Mahalavanya Sevadishi, it's a treasure house of great beauty. You can see, when you see swan, you get inspiration. You will remember this line. Marali Manda Gamana, when you see the swan uh, really, uh, you know, swimming across uh, the water, say they are very gentle and very elegant. So this is a comparison of Devi, how she walks. So we are coming to almost the end of the uh, uh, Sotrams now. We are going to be the last one. Sarva Runana Vatyangi, Sarva Barana Pushita. Shiva Kames for Angasta, Shiva Swadi Navalabha. This verse, you know, it actually sums up Ambar's beauty. It's a beautiful one line summary. You know, Sarvaruna, Aruna is being mentioned here, rosy red, hued all over. All over means what? Her, her garments, her limbs, her ornaments, everything. Is Sarvaruna, which kind of so so rosy red. Anavatyagi. Anavatyagi means no fault with faultless limbs. Sarvabaranabhushita. Some of these words are simple and you can understand. Abaranam means the ornaments. Sarvabaranam means all types of ornaments. Bhushita means she is adorned. So she is adorned with all types of ornaments. We describe them in detail, right? It is said that there are at least 40 ornaments. 40 ornaments which are adorning Ambal from head to toe. Maybe more, I don't know. <laughs> at least 40. So that is the description of Ambal in one line, Sarva Runana Vajjangi, Sarva Banana Bhushita. And it ends up with the line, Shiva Kameshwar Angastha, Shiva Swadhi Navaldabha. You know, with that one, actually, the description of Devi's physical form ends. Shiva is the most auspicious, as you know, the beneficial. And Devi is one who does good, hence called Shiva. She is also called Shiva, also Samhari. And she possesses exactly the same excellent qualities like Shiva. She is identical with Shiva. Shiva Kame Swarangastha. And she is Swadhina Vallabha. Shiva Swadhina Vallabha. Swadhina Vallabha means she has won over her Lord. She is 
excelling or hard without her shiva is powerless i want to quote the first verse of saundarya lahiri here because it it really says a lot about what is the power of shakti shiva satya yukto yati bhavati saktaha prabhavitum na chede mam devo na kalu kusala spanditum api atastvam aradyam harihar virjati berapi pranantum stotum va khatamakrata punya prabhavati it's a very first of saundarya lagari which says lord shiva becomes able only when shakti joins her she cannot do anything without shakti to do creation in the world along with the shakti without her even an inch she cannot move so how can one who does not do any meritorious good deeds or one who does not pray sambal become really qualified to worship her o oh, goddess who is worshiped by the trinity so that is the power of amba she is actually lending power to shiva to do all the work so this is the shiva kamishwarangasta the identity of shiva and kamishwari is being stressed here in the last line so with this verse we have come to the end of devi's physical description and we have also completed 54 namas 54 namas and we would love to continue this in the next session so at this time i think it's time to conclude Uh, I see Soma Venkat waiting for me. <laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. No, no, no. I wanted to add one thing, Guruji. Very excellent. Yes. I'm not waiting. Please. I let him talk about. But you, you said that beautifully about uh, uh, Shakti is the power uh, given to Shiva in Tamil. There is a jokingly they say, "Vadam la Shakti le na Shiva ne na dundra mandi dana." Correct. <laughs> so if you don't have Shakti, just stay as you are. Such a beautiful statement on that. On that. Thank yes, you. Yes. And yes. And any. yes so uh with that we complete the 54 namas and i am concluding this session as usual with the vas om shakti om shakti om para shakti om shakti om shakti om om shakti om shakti om para shakti om shakti om shakti om om shakti om shakti om para shakti om shakti om shakti om om shakti om shakti om para shakti om shakti om shakti om Om Sri Matre Namaha. So until we meet next month, I wish you all a very happy Adi month, and please do recite these at home and be blessed by Devi. Thank you all very much. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Guruji. Uh, just drenched with uh, exalt exalt verses of uh, this uh, Lalita Sastamam. so beautifully explained by you so thanks for uh, participating in this uh, event today uh, the next uh, uh, lecture will be on august 15th so thank you all uh, so ma you want to say a few words no no i'm good i think perfectly right thank you and if there are any questions i don't know whether you want to share the slide that um, we'll yeah i'm good i think you yes. can share that and if there are any questions feel free to send a mail to ls lectures at uh, svbfnorth.org i think uh, tim will share the slide so but not merely questions if there are any suggestions or comments also they are welcome they are welcome Thanks. any any comments uh, uh, most welcome because we would like to tune this future thing uh, uh, to match the expectations of our viewers you know the time element whether i am going fast or slow whether the explanations need to be elaborate or somewhat condensed you know even those kind of comments are most welcome so going to share i think uh, the sound is not coming oh i don't think it is being shared i think guruji you have to stop sharing okay i'll stop sharing okay go can ahead you now. Hear me now yes we can hear you thank you thank okay, you okay i just wanted to add this line that uh, 
not only question but even comments are most welcome yes absolutely absolutely okay. thank you okay thank you very much thank you for gadam guru shri चंद्रमौलीश्वर के शक्ति गणपति शारदाबिगे शंकराचार्य के शक्ति गणपति महागणपति शारदाबिगे के काल भैरव के काली दुर्ग के वीर धीर शूर हनुम मारुति चरण तिथे मल्लिकार्जुन के चलव जनार्दन के अंबा भवानी कंबद गणपति चंडी चामुंडी के श्री कृष्ण भगवान के श्री चक्रवासी के सीता राम लक्ष्मण सहित मारुति चरण के विद्यारण्य के विद्याशंकर के बागीश्वर के वज्रदे गुड आंचने के श्री वल्ली देव सेना समेत सुब्रमण्य के तुंग भद्र के श्रृंग निवासी के श्रृंगेरी पुरी नील तरक शारदाबिक के सच्चिदानंद शिव अभिनव नृसिंह भारति के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु सार्वभौमर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु विद्यातीर्थर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु भारती तीर्थर के श्री चंद्रशेखर भारती गुरु विदुशेखर भारति के मंगल गुरुश्री चंद्रमौलीश्वर के शक्ति गणपति शारदाबि शंकराचार्य के शक्ति गणपति महागणपति शारदाबि के श्रृंगेरी पुरी नारदाबि के Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you again. Until we meet next month. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Om Sri Matre Namaha.